Hey guys, so I'm sure you've all seen these uh, large, super mega diaphragm microphones that go on your bass drum, right? Sometimes they're manufactured like that. Sometimes they might just be an old speaker that someone stuck in front of the bass drum. And the whole idea of this is to try to capture these like sub low frequencies. Do they really do the trick? Do they actually really give you much better low end definition? Today, we're gonna try to figure that out. Uh, specifically, we're gonna take a look at this guy right here. This is DW's version of it that they call the Moon Mic. Uh, we're gonna take a look at this and uh, discuss why we're looking at this one versus some other ones that are out there. We're gonna look at what it takes uh, to set it up once you unbox it, proper setup, some specs, and we're gonna look at a lot of sound samples on using this on the bass drum, using this on the floor tom, and one little surprise at the end. Okay, so let's unbox this thing. As you can see, it comes in two separate boxes. One is for the microphone itself. The other is for the stand. Inside of the box for the microphone is yet another box. Uh, this is a more proper box, you know, like a nice little finish on it with the branding and everything. Uh, inside of there is three different things. The mic, a little microfiber cloth, which is apparently used to clean the, uh, the nice little chrome finishing or chrome housing for the microphone. Um, it also comes with a single sheet manual. The manual talks about specs, proper positioning, uh, some tips on post-production. We're gonna go through all that in a little bit. The stand itself comes in two pieces, the base and a little arm, right? So the arm is going to attach to the base and then the microphone is gonna attach to the other side of the arm. The base is only a 7000 series. So if you're, you're a big DW player and you're used to the 9000 series, it's not going to have any of that double braced legs or anything like that. Uh, but you know, for what we're using it for, 7000 is probably going to be uh, good enough. It's going to be able to keep it nice and sturdy for you. One thing that I didn't like about it, you know, like I said, it's going to be nice and sturdy, but I actually had a lot of problems trying to get the legs open right away. Uh, so as you can see in this video, when I was first putting it together, I was just kind of threw it together after giving up a little bit on getting the legs ready. Uh, but afterwards, I took the mic back off and I spent like a, a good like minute really trying to shove down the base to get the legs to open up all the way. One other thing I found when I first put the mic on the stand, I put it so the orientation was so that the microphone clip, the little XLR plug, I had that oriented straight up um, but apparently you want that the other way you want it flipped so it's upside down so that the uh the mic plug is facing upside down and it's significantly easier that way to be able to mount this thing in front of your bass drum so there were two things in particular about the dw version versus the uh, competitor uh, versions of these sub low mics that really caught my attention that made me think that if any of them are going to have some kind of big effect it's going to be this one here uh, so like i said there were two things one is the size of the diaphragm the dw1 is eight inches where the competitors are maybe an inch and a half less than that uh, so i would figure that that should help be able to capture more of those very very low end frequencies the other is actually the, the total uh, frequency range per their spec. Um, you know, if I looked at, when I looked at some of the competitors, the um, high end of the frequency range claimed to only go up to two kilohertz, whereas the DW1 went up to 15 kilohertz. So there's, this mic is 20 hertz to 15 kilohertz. So it seemed like um, it would probably work the best as far as capturing those low ends and maybe kind of blending in with other bass drum mics. Most other things about this is, you know, pretty typical, right? Has a cardioid pickup pattern, low impedance output, right? It's got, um, as I mentioned, it's got an XLR jack on it. Uh, one thing that is kind of interesting is supposedly this back setup here is supposed to give it a lot of rejection and it actually seems like uh, there's all these little holes here and it looks like there's actually some foam in there behind this so um yeah so that's supposed to give it a lot of rejection um now that i'm handling it a little bit too actually i can see why they they gave me that microfiber cloth before because i'm getting my 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 dirty fingerprints all over it their little manual also comes with certain best practices so they say that you should take the microphone when you're placing it in front of your bass drum you should place it an inch to four inches inside of the rim. Um, and they say that the closer to the inside you are, 
the more of those low end frequencies that you're gonna get. But if your head has any holes, you know, if it's ported, to not put it in front of that port. You don't want the air moving in and hitting the diaphragm, diaphragm of the mic. Now, once you've picked the spot in front of your bass drum where you want this to go, uh, the next question is how far away? The manual says a half inch to four inches, but let me tell you that uh, depending on how loose your bass drum head is or how much give it has when you hit it, you're gonna might, you might find that you have to back it up a little bit. Otherwise, the head might start to smack the diaphragm. They also give some advice about if you're dealing with phase issues, right? Um, you're probably gonna be using this microphone with multiple mics or at least one other mic. In fact, that's what their recommendation is. Um, and we're gonna play around with that and we're gonna see how this does sound compared to other microphones in a bit. Um, but let me tell you that they also say you should change the phase of other mics versus this one. Changing the phase on this source once you get it could result in a loss of the frequencies. Um, let me tell you that actually there is a better tip than just trying to flip uh, phases around. Uh, there is a way to do time correction on bass. Um, when you have multiple microphones and they're a different distance from the source, which is going to be the case here, right? If you have a microphone inside the bass drum and this one that's outside, the sound is going to hit them at different times. So, like I said, there is a better way than just trying to change the phase. I have a different video that talks about this, the like proper way of doing phase correction. I'll have a link to it in the description below. Okay, so let's jump into some of the sound samples. Like I said before, we're gonna start off with the bass drum. When I had this mounted for these sound samples, I had it about two and a half inches in from the rim and an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half back from the head. Now I ran this mic and two other mics at the same time. The other mics I have is an AKG D112. That's mounted inside my bass drum, very close to the head. The other is a more traditional looking bass drum mic that this one is made by Bayer Dynamic. I have this in the ported hole and it's so that the, uh, the metal grill portion of it is just inside the head. All three of these mics are going through my API preamps. They're not going through any outboard compression or anything. Once in the DAW, outside of the, uh, the phase correction and time correction that I'm doing on them, I'm not doing any other processing. Um, there's no gating, EQ, compression. The only thing that you'll hear that, or you might hear is that I have some limiters at the very end of the mix just so I don't clip my output. Now, when you're listening, we're gonna go through a whole series of different things so that you can really identify what the individual mics sound like and how they're actually interacting together. So first you're gonna hear the just the AKG mic, then just the Bayer Dynamic mic, and then just the DW The Moon mic. Uh, then we're going to start to pair up, like, you know, each set of pairs of mics. Uh, finally, we're going to have all three together. Then after that, we're going to go back through, because that's just going to be the bass drum mics in complete isolation. We're going to go back through and we're going to throw in the overheads. And we're going to listen to how those microphone sound sources work in a full mix.
All right, so my first impressions there was that it did seem like that the Moon mic gave it a lot more low end, a lot more depth. I think if I was going to pick just two mics, I think it, it paired best with the uh, the AKG, just because the AKG has so much attack. So the two of them are really kind of filling out the whole um, sound spectrum there. Of course, I didn't mind having all three mics going, um, but I'm sure that uh, the other guys in my band are to kill me if I try to have that much bass drum in the mix. So while this is on you know paper supposed to be a bass drum mic, DW does uh, have some stuff that says, you know, hey, you should try using this on your floor tom. So I figured I was gonna try that out myself. Uh, I got a, uh, a 16 inch floor tom over on my right here. There's a maple mahogany from Pearl. Uh, I'm going to do a three mic kind of setup on this as well. Uh, so I'm gonna drop back down to just one bass drum mic on these next samples. So what, it, what are we gonna be doing? Well, I'm gonna have over here uh, a condenser mic on the top and the uh, Sennheiser MD421 on the bottom. This time, as far as pl placement is concerned, I have this an inch away from the head and then an inch and a half in from the rim. Both of the bottom mics are gonna be going through my API preamps this time. The uh, top mic, that little Bayer dynamic uh, condenser mic that I'm using, this is gonna go through some stock preamp. So my initial reaction on using this on the floor tom, um, you know, I've I always thought I had a decent low end sound on the on that floor tom, but I you know using this does show me that there's a lot more that I could get there. Perhaps just a, a traditional bass drum mic on the bottom instead of the Sennheiser mic would um, do just as well. But you know, I, I do think that there's that this is going to cut a lot more. It's going to like give you a much 
badder sound in the mix if you're using this or using something even you know something equivalent to this on the uh, the bottom side so as i mentioned there was going to be one little surprise at the end uh, i actually just recently at a yard sale someone i knew found this marching bass drum uh, that someone else decided to try to convert it treat it as a concert bass drum but i think it is technically a marching bass drum uh, so we're going to actually try something similar on this i'm going to set up the moon mic and the, uh, the that Bayer Dynamic bass drum microphone on this guy here. And I'm gonna run them both through the API. And we're just gonna listen to each one in isolation and then together. One important thing to note on this, remember I said that you have to be careful of how close you put the microphones because if the head is moving out, it could smack this guy. Well, when I was first uh, setting this up, trying to, trying to get the levels and everything, I was actually having that problem. I had it too close and the head was actually touching it. I would like to just give one little quick moment of silence to the bass drum uh, mallet, which I completely, totally just broke filming the, uh, that little section there. Um, some of the, I, I recorded them out of order and now you'll know if you saw, but I, I was kind of gripping way up on some of those shots there. And that's because it was starting to break and I was trying to like keep it together for just, just to get through the rest of that video. In all seriousness though, um, I do hope that this video today has helped you out if you were in the market if you were considering buying this sort of product i hope it's kind of answered the question for you whether or not that amount of low end uh you know first of all whether or not this is going to add a lot more low end which it definitely does um and whether or not that extra low end is something that you want or you need you know this microphone from dw it is not cheap um as of right now when i'm filming this it's about 500 dollars uh, it's definitely extremely well constructed and it definitely 100% does what it does, uh, what it is um, marketed to do, I should say. Uh, so it'll be up to you if you guys, you know, want to get that or a cheaper version or if you want to just convert an old monitor into one of these types of mics. If you guys do pick up one of these microphones after um, checking this video out, I would love to know about it and love to know about the any experiences that you have with it. Let me know about that in the comments below. I'm also making other videos, you know, other, you know, recording tip videos and gear review for drum videos and, you know, play alongs and covers and lessons and all sorts of good stuff. So if you guys don't want to miss out on that stuff, then don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, peace.